So it's time for this compressor to go out and live on the small concrete pad that I poured forward a few weeks ago. But unfortunately, I don't have a way to move this thing with a machine or anything, so it's gonna have to be manhandled out back. Luckily, I have my buddy Al here to, to help me move this. So what I'm gonna have to do to make this thing manageable is tear it back down. Now, I should have left it apart when it originally showed up here, but forward thinking is not always my strong point. So. I'm gonna tear this thing down, get it in pieces that can be handled, and we're gonna try to get this thing out back. Oh, like that. You've done it once? Yes, it's not that hard. Slap it back together like nobody's business. So when it's said and done, you're gonna end up with four pieces? Hmm? When it's all said and done, you'll end up with four big pieces? Yeah. Is it break time, Al? Mm-hmm. What, yeah, what are you eating? I think these are tricks. Because tricks are for kids. <laughs> yes, they are. Prosper, but you gotta live. Where do you want to go with it? Just down. Straight down? Mm-hmm. Just leave it hooked up. Oh, that'll work. Push, push, push. Push, 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 push. Pull the bottom out. There you go. Nice, right, balanced. Got it? Yep. Let's start. Lifting it up my way. Right up. Set it down. Yep. There we go. That's all right. Yeah. Set it down. Stuck on the leg. You ready to go? Yeah. Better? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Tight. Slow. All right.
Man, that thing's heavy. Oh, it's not close enough. <laughs> so I just received these machine pads in the mail. I'm not exactly for sure who sent them. I believe it was probably my friend, Ma, because these are what's going to go under the feet of the air compressor, and when he brought that compressor, he had a few of these with him. So I'm assuming that he sent me these, but before I can use these under the feet of the compressor, I really do need to put some holes in them. And before I can put some holes in them, I have to have a drill press to use. So I temporarily wired this thing up, so we'll get to see together if it, if it works. It should. It better. does work. Sounds pretty good, I think. In reverse, it's got a, a little clicking, but I think it's probably just some buildup on the gear teeth. I'm not, you know, you don't normally run these things in reverse, unless you do a lot of, you know, slow tapping, and then you reverse it out, which I do with the one we have at my day job quite often. So I think it'll be just fine. Need some TLC, but it's gonna work great, I think. So the good thing about this drill press is that it it's a gear drive head for, for one, quick to change speeds on, and plus it runs at a slow enough speed where you can run larger drill bits and steel without worrying about burning up the drill, which is not something that I could do easily with the uh, with my old drill press. That's it. We just need a hole in it. There we go. Oh. Yep, that was it. Oh. So all I'm doing here is drilling the concrete pad for some half by 13 drive-in concrete anchors, and that'll be what'll hold this compressor to the concrete pad. The compressor will obviously be sitting on the cork and rubber pads that I showed that me and Al drilled through just a second ago. Now, I am going to change the way that the way that I mounted this compressor up, or the way that I actually hooked this compressor into the air loop that's in the shop. Now, in this video, I use a solid piece of that blue line, which I think was a bad idea, and several viewers brought up the fact that probably shouldn't hook the compressor up using that method. So, I'm going to go to a rubber whip or a soft, flexible line that runs through the wall instead of a rigid piece to help isolate any vibrations you know, that I'm going to get from this compressor, because I think that's the best way to do it.
pretty. No, it looks good. Just thinking. So there it is on the rubber feet, ran through the wall, connected to the loop. Still got to obviously build the enclosure over it to keep it dry. You don't want it, something like this setting out in the weather. So that's next. The roof. So me and Al decided we'd at least get started building the roof that I'm going to put over the compressor, rotary phase converter, and potentially all the way over the doorway that leads out of the back of the shop. I had a lot of viewers suggest that I go over that far, and it's I'm definitely considering it, but it, that presents a few problems with access around the building if you're you know, considering the support posts that we'll need to hold up the end of this roof. So I'm not for sure yet that I'm going to go over that far, but... You know, we'll see. And me and Al, we're, we're working as fast as we can here because there's a large rainstorm on its way. The radar actually is showing that it's right over top of us, basically, while we're doing this. But we want to get everything done outside that we can while he's here and I have his help. So we're at least going to make some progress on this uh, roof that's going to cover all my stuff outside. So unfortunately, due to weather, we really didn't make a lot of progress past what you see here on the on the roof. We got our flashing up, we got our seal plate or, or head or whatever you want to call it attached to the building. It's just a treated 2 before 4 tap con to the block work about every two feet. And this will be what the end of the roof that attaches to the building hooks to with some joist hangers. And then we'll just build off from that and support the end of the roof with some treated 2 befores now or 4 befores Now, I'm not exactly for sure how I'm going to connect those 4 befores to the ground yet. I haven't really you know, thought that out, but it's going to be relatively simple and just going to be shingled with the same shingles that I used on the roof of the building. So this box just arrived in the mail the other day and I want to share with you what's in it. It's from a viewer of the channel named Chris Claus. Thank you, Chris. Definitely appreciate it. He noticed that I had this tool on one of my on my wish list on Amazon and he said, I've got one lightly used. Would you be interested in it? And I said, absolutely, I would be because I don't care if it's new because that new does not last me very long if you haven't noticed. So I want to share it with you because you may find that you need one for your shop or home. I don't see why you wouldn't. There's also a couple more items in here that I wanted that I'm glad that he sent. So thank you, Chris, I appreciate it. Let me share this thing with you. I'm excited to try it out. All right, let me show you what he sent. Now I've had my eye on one of these ever since this rebuild shop rebuild project started. And it is a small four and a half inch little, uh, little skill saw, really. Obviously change the depth of cut. It miters as well which is nice. And it doesn't feel cheesy and flimsy. It, it's actually got a pretty good feel to it. I've never used a Rockwell branded tool before. I can tell you that it is heavily glass fiber reinforced on the plastic and the switch, if you can hear that, it's got a really good solid feel to it. Not, uh, not what I would expect actually. So I can't wait to try that thing out. It feels like a quality tool. He sent me this, sent me some extra blades, which I appreciate. He said he only used it a couple times. It wasn't, uh, you know, he just bought it for a project, I guess. So thank you, Chris. I will work on my project with it. Uh, let me show you what else he sent. 
So the last item that Chris sent was the entire outfit for a five gallon bucket. Now you see all sorts of tradesmen that use this technique for carrying their tools around and that's because it works extremely well. Electricians, you know, AC repair, just pretty much anybody who has to go from one place to another and wants to carry their tools and keep them somewhat organized. Look at all the pockets on the outside of that. I mean, literally, you could fill this thing up so heavy you wouldn't even be able to carry it. So that's the outside, and then for the inside of your bucket, several, well, two, one made by Dickies, one made by Bucket Boss, and they're just multi-pocketed inserts that go inside of your of your bucket. So if you just got a, you know, a certain tools for a certain job, you could, you know, keep them in these removable pockets and you know, go to your job instead of carrying the whole deal, but you get the idea. Handy, I'm gonna get a better bucket to put this on, but that's nice. I can't wait to, to start using that. So I'm really excited to add this table to the shop. Nice workbench. It's a butcher block style. I highly recommend these. They're just really pleasant to, to work on. Uh, nice large area there. Fits in front of the window beautifully. My dad's got a couple of these that he's been using for decades and they just hold up extremely well. You can really hammer on one of these tables and they just seem to last forever. This one's obviously used, but man, it'll last forever, as long as they're kept dry. That's one of the one of the main things. Now it's drilled for a vise and it actually came with the vise, which is a which is a bonus. I took it off because it was easier to move this thing without the extra weight. It's just a cheap craftsman vise, but you know, nothing wrong with it. Perfectly good and usable. So I'm gonna put it right back where it come from. I'm excited to have this thing. Let me get you a little better shot of the top of it. I mean, like I said, it's used, but it's perfect in my opinion. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the way that these are made, but you can see the individual piece of wood. They're just glued and pressed together, and then the top is planed flat, which makes an extremely durable uh, woodwork surface. And they make great uh, workbenches. And you can pick up a tabletop like this, I believe, anywhere from two to three hundred dollars for the top, depending on where you buy it. And really, they'd last a lifetime. It's like one and done. You buy it once, and that's it. Um, the original owner of this table passed away, and now you know it's passed to me. Actually, I bought it, but you get the idea. Um, they last for a very long time. You can see that the individual that worked on this table worked right next to the vice, like all of us do. So. There you go, it's a nice table. It'll live probably next to the window because it's a great spot for it. Good light. Yeah. Gotta mount some lights to it and let's stick this vise down real quick. So I bought this table as a package deal. Um, table, obviously vise, these lights, which are really nice. Uh, you can't have too many work lights. I bought it as a package deal from a really good friend and colleague of mine um, who, whose friend passed away and the family was trying to clear out a laboratory that they shared a room you know, to work in. And uh, that's how I ended up with it. So I'm glad to have it and uh, I appreciate uh, my, my friend uh, turning me on to this because I've been wanting one of these for quite some time, these tabletops, they're nice. But I didn't want to pay the price that one costs new. So this light here is just a standard fluorescent light, obviously really nice over the, over the vise where you're going to be doing a lot of work. And then we have a dazer, a little fluorescent magnifying 
uh, work lamp, which would be really nice as well. It's kind of far away, but maybe uh, maybe I'll put it up here on the corner. I don't know. We'll see. But both really nice to have. You definitely can't have too many work lights. So let me introduce you to the new shop lift, which I'm extremely excited to have. This is basically the Cadillac version of a pallet jack, which I was in the market for a regular hand pump pallet jack, and this thing came up along with the table at a really fair price. So I decided you know, this was uh, head and shoulders better than a standard pallet jack because it lifts, I think, five to six feet close to two meters, which your standard pallet jack only lifts six or eight inches, plus this thing is self-propelled and also in extremely good condition. It lived its life primarily in a laboratory type environment and I think was used mostly as a uh, mobile work table. So let me show it to you in a little better detail. I'll show you what I know about it anyway. And uh, man, I'm excited to have this thing. It's so nice. Let me show it to you. So Caterpillar branded Portman lift. Let me show you what's wrong with this thing because it does have it does have some small problems, uh, nothing major. For one, the charge cord is uh, is eat up on it and will have to be replaced. And for two, the batteries that are uh, in this thing, I think they're original, and this is from this is a 2003 model, are NFG, so they no longer hold a charge more than a few minutes. Now these are glass mat batteries, which I think are deep cycle, as far as I know, and pretty expensive uh, if you contact the manufacturer for direct replacements. But they look standard size to me. I haven't dived into that at all and I think I can get away with replacing these batteries with just two standard 12 volt car batteries which are much cheaper than these things as far as uh, as far as I know because DC voltage is DC voltage and amperage is amperage and as long as I can meet those requirements I think it will work uh, just fine. It has a built-in charger uh, so you just plug this thing in the wall at night, it charges itself up, and uh, you know, you're know you good for probably all day. I don't plan to run this thing like you would in an industrial uh, setting where you run it till it's dead. So uh, that's probably why it has some deep cycles on it. But I think I can get away with much cheaper uh, by putting two standard car batteries on this thing. But other than that, I think uh, this thing doesn't have any more problems. So let me show you around it because it's in extremely good condition uh, otherwise. So one of the major things that tell me that this little lift has been lightly used is that the coating is not even wore off the forks on this thing, nor is the back plate here scratched up at all, really, and the sides still have paint on them, which if you've noticed, uh, the backs of forklifts are usually scratched all the pieces where they turn from the back, and this just has a few, a few little scratches on it. So this thing's obviously lived a uh, pretty, uh, pretty tame life. So let me show you a few more details about this, and I'll uh, show you how high it lifts as well. So there's the forks all the way up. That's about five feet actually, because I'm five foot seven. Um, so not quite two meters. Now the only thing I don't like about this uh, lift is that the forks aren't adjustable in width, which is super handy if, if it would be, but you know, it's kind of being picky. Uh, this will probably serve me just fine. Um, has a lift capacity of 2,200 pounds uh, at the back near the mast and then 1,100 out at the end of the forks, is, says the sticker. Um, so pretty good, pretty good actually for what it is. Are you ready? Is that high enough? Okay. <laughs> Pretty neat, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Does it move? Yeah. Fast, or I mean like no, I mean you can move it really slow, like here. Like this. How much? 
2,204 pounds at the back of the forks. So pretty good, you know. Plenty strong enough to lift the majority of stuff that you're that you're going to lift. It's got a horn. So here's a couple shots of me getting this thing out of the back of the truck, just rolling it down some some two by two by twelves using my favorite force multiplier, the old come along. You move about anything with these if you're careful. So I know it's dark and you can't see, but we have one keeping it from going and then one making it go. And I'm just adjusting those, you know, as I need to. The, in the world of heavy, this is not that heavy, but uh, in the world of awkward, it ranks up there. go it's in the shop this thing uh, it really needs bat well not really it does it needs batteries they're bad So let's get started cleaning up the old do-all badged. It's a Swedish made drill press. We actually have this same drill press at work, but it's labeled Wilton. Um, I was told it was manufactured by Strands, but you know, I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't matter who badges it. It's still a awesome drill press. And this one needs a lot of TLC cleaning and uh, adjusting. But we'll start on the table, you know, the most obvious uh, in your face part and then we'll work our way around it, inspecting and cleaning as we go. So I'm gonna start off with just some purple power and a razor blade. This table does have some amateur peck marks in it, but it's really not all that bad. We'll, we'll know more as we, as we get this thing uh, tore down or cleaned up a bit. Hopefully we don't have to tear it down. So the drill press has got some peck marks in it, that's for sure, and two places where it's drilled all the way through. And given the age of this drill press, it's really not in that bad a shape. I've seen them a lot worse.
So I think that looks really good and that's how you turn a $300 drill press into a $1,000 drill press in about four hours. Just a good cleaning, a going over, right? Adjusting everything. When stuff works the way that it should, you know, it's not all crunchy or doesn't feel like it's grinding. Um, you know, it changes, changes people's perspective on a machine. You can take a, a dirty machine just does not have the appeal that a clean machine does. And if you haven't noticed, when you wash your car, it drives better. So clean machines, just nice. Um, I got a lot of interest in this machine last time, last video when I, when I first showed it. People wanna know why that uh, I like this thing so much. What are the features that I find most, most appealing on it? And um, the major thing, let me get you in closer. We'll go over them really quick before we end this thing because I'd like to share it with you. So the major thing that I like about this drill press is just the massive table compared to the, the drill size itself that this thing has. Plus it has large T-slots in it and you can move a vise around. Uh, I know at work we have this same machine like I mentioned several times and sometimes we'll work on bigger stuff. And this is just a good size table for medium sized fabrication and stuff like that in my opinion. Another thing that I really like about this machine is it has a Morse taper number three spindle, which is nice. The spindle is also adjustable, which is a feature that you may use once, uh, you know, to take the slop out. It also has two nice adjustable stops on this, on the, on the spindle. So you can you know, repeat drill depths very easily. You, you know, you can have two set up at one time. Um, another thing that I really like about this machine, let me change the camera angle and I'll show you. So the other thing that I really like on this machine is the extremely large foot. This table rotates as well, um, if you, if you wonder, just like any drill press. But this large foot plus this head that can be adjusted down, the drill head on it, you can drill some pretty large items, which I have used several times, uh, in the past, uh, it's nice to have a foot that has some T-slots in it and that's big enough to use. So that's another thing that I really like about this machine. So probably the last couple of things that I really like about this machine is the gear-driven head because it's quick to go from one speed to the other. And I, and I like the range that it has, anywhere from 120 RPM up to 1640. So it's a four-speed box, but a two-speed motor. And another thing about this machine is that it's just a good solid drill press. You know, it's not flopping around everywhere like the little tin can that I have right now. Good and smooth. I may be a bit partial. Not may, I am. Uh, I have used a machine exactly like this for the last 14 years daily, and it's never let me down. So, you know, my experience with, with a machine of this design is really good. This drill range also allows you to run some of the larger bits, unlike the little one that I have right now, which even a half inch drill in, if you're, if you're cutting steel, you know, it's just too fast. You know, it'll burn them up, especially if you're trying to drill stainless or something, you know, like 13 millimeters max, in my opinion. Where this, you know, you can get up in the, you know, quite a bit larger because it has a lower speed and it has the torque uh, to, to run it. The major downfall to this machine it's Achilles heel, in my opinion, is that the motor for this machine, if you notice, you don't see one, there's no attached motor. It's actually in the case and it's incorporated into the, into the machine. So if you had electric motor problems with it, it would be, it would be an issue, but I've never, never seen one give trouble, although I'm sure it's happened. But that's it, you know, I like this machine. If you find one out there in the wild at a reasonable price, it's definitely a good machine to have. Um, I'm glad that I have one, that's for sure. So keep your eyes open. You'll find one if you're interested. So this video is getting pretty long and I guess I'm gonna call it here. I've got some real exciting stuff coming up in the near future that I'm, that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. So hang in there for that. Um, big thanks to my friend Al for coming down and helping me for a couple days. It was really nice of him. We got a lot done. We really, really busted it and uh, and made some progress around here, which is nice. I've been holding out on doing the siding uh, because it's been so muddy. It's just ridiculous on that hillside, uh, as muddy as it's been. So hopefully the weather will uh, cooperate and dry up a bit. I know it's starting to get a bit warmer, which is nice. I think spring's uh, knocking on the door. Also, a little bit of progress on the 
enclosure over the uh, compressor and the rotary phase converter. I'm going to try to work on that some this week, maybe, or or just try to finish up on the siding. We'll see. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot around here to do. There's no shortage of jobs, that's for sure, and uh, there's a shortage of time, but not jobs. So I guess that's it this week. Drill press is awesome, and I'm excited to have it. So that's it, I guess. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project in any way. People who you know, continue to help me out and uh, you know support the channel. It's it's what keeps everything rolling around here. So thank you very much uh, from uh, all of us here. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower.